Hi, my name is Hayden Davison, and some of my fondest childhood memories revolve around, as I'm sure they do for many, Disney. The start of my life was riddled with movies, toys, and games, all with that big swirling signature displayed proudly somewhere on it. Ah, the memories. As I've gotten older, my love for the movies I grew up on has not disappeared, and I find myself still terribly excited for new releases. Guys, Gigantic may have been cancelled, but they're making their own movie about a dragon. Eat your heart out, Toothless. In a lot of ways, my love for Disney has grown as I've gotten older. When we can manage to scrape enough money together to go to the parks, Disney World in particular, they have become my family's favorite vacation spot, and I even almost proposed to my wife there. Look, you can see that my hand on the ring in my pocket. This is the face of a coward. But don't worry, I did propose a few months later. So like you can just twist it all the way off. Those last facts might not have been true. But this is. My mother is an avid Disney bounder, which if you are unfamiliar is when you loosely dress up as a different Disney character every day, and we have a whole wall in our home dedicated to our trips, favorite rides, and movies. For me, Disney has always felt like a bright spot during the darkest of times. A warm blanket for my mind when I feel left out in the cold, an hour or two where the world seems the way you thought it would be when you were a kid. So in times such as these, I find myself listening to Disney music and asking my wife if she wants to watch one of our favorites at night. But as much of a Disney fan as I am, there are still 8 of the currently 58 animated Disney movies considered canon that I have not yet or have only seen in part. And so I figured I would take a break from my normal brain comfort food and explore the dark corners of Disney that I had yet to experience. As I was about to begin tracking down and watching the few in the catalog I had not yet seen, a thought occurred to me, what if I just watched them all? In order. It would be kind of fun to experience the ups and downs and changes the studio went through in the order that they actually happened. I proposed the idea to my wife, and she excitedly agreed. Then I said to her, okay, but what if I filmed us watching them and used the clips and sound bites to start a YouTube channel where I review each movie, also inviting strangers on the internet to watch in order with us? To which she replied with a resounding, sure, whatever. So we're doing it. Welcome to Kite String Reviews. No, the name has nothing to do with Disney, but I made the logo years ago and I never found anything to do with it besides put it on this cat hair magnet of a hat. So yeah, I'm finally going to use it. So come along with us into the Disney vault on what is sure to be an interesting journey to say the least as we explore not just the golden age of Disney, or the critically acclaimed revival of my childhood known as the Renaissance, but also periods like when, in Aristocats, the artists just decided they didn't need to erase all the old pencil lines and cats didn't always need eyes. Ugh, nightmares. Honestly, I'm really excited to get to Aristocats because I have a lot to say about it. I have a whole rant already planned. Very excited. But most of all, I'm excited to sit down and watch some of my favorite childhood <laughs> films, and I hope that you are, too. Thumbs up. <laughs>